We describe the gunpowder dynasty of Ming China. The Mongol Yuan dynasty that had begun in China with a bang under Kublai Khan in 1271 was pulling into the standard end of dynasty station by the 1360s. There was a lot of tension between the pro-Chinese factions and the pro-Mongol factions in the government. Leaders were ousted, leaders were assassinated, intellectuals began to fight back against the Mongol culture. Nature also decided to pummel the empire with harsh winters, multiple famines, a massive flood in the Yellow River, and the suffering of the farmers. And then the government tried to make up for lost revenue by overtaxing the already spent farmers. Robbery and corruption began to increase, and the government began to break down. Throughout the Mongol rule, there was a rebellious faction known as the Red Turban Movement, who had worked to restore the Song Dynasty to power. At the end of the Yuan Dynasty, the movement was being led by Zhu Yuanjiang, a peasant who wanted to restore Confucianism to China and get leaders who were ethical instead of ambitious and greedy. The problems of China had led many disgruntled people into the Red Turban Rebellion, and in 1356 they captured Nanjing on the way to forcing the Emperor Togon Temer to flee back to Mongolia. Zhu called his new dynasty the Ming in 1368 and named himself Hongwu. He began to wipe out all Mongol influence he could find. Hongwu revived the glory of the Han Dynasty as both he and Hong Wudi had sprung from peasant stock. He restored the scholar gentry, the civil service exam, universities, and the libraries. Hong Wu put a heavy reliance on the exam to determine the new social structure of the dynasty. He began eliminating would-be enemies from his court, including the position of chief minister, which had been notoriously corrupt. He ordered public beatings for corrupt officials and exiled rivals. He temporarily banned court eunuchs and broke up cliques by marrying commoners into the royal class. And he also pushed thought control. Also, he forced Neo-Confucianism through strict policies. If a student did not respect a teacher, that student's head was to be chopped off and hung in the town square for all to see. Women were to become more subservient, losing many of the rights they'd gained under the Mongol. Despite the harsh levels of enforcement designed to restore order and the Mongol cleansing, the Ming Dynasty oversaw a rapid agricultural transition in China, as a peasant, Hong Wu increased the rights and land holdings of the peasantry and pushed for public works programs to provide employment, allowing open land to be settled tax-free. The people of China were encouraged to take side jobs in handicraft making silk, cotton, and ceramics, encouraged to take jobs and programs to rebuild the Great Wall and clean the Yellow River, and also to plant American maize, peanuts, and sweet potato to prevent famine. Culture, trade, and advanced cannon making blossomed under the Ming Dynasty. The population boomed to 300 million, the largest population on Earth at the time. Europeans increasingly arrived to trade silver and Western food for the Chinese handicrafts and tea. Macau and Canton were sanctioned trading zones, which also increased the scholar gentry's power in the region. Chinese exploration was proposed and led by a Muslim eunuch named Zheng He. 